listening to Vantage Point Podcast, dedicated to giving godly perspective to everyday living. Let's get into this week's episode. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Vantage Point Podcast, where we bring insight, keys, and perspective to daily living through the lens of God. I'm your host, Nick, and welcome to week three of a series we're doing it to kick off season four called Back at It, Prioritizing Our Relationship with Christ. And if you've been with us for these first two weeks, man, you you definitely heard some amazing uh, just insight to just getting back and prioritizing that relationship. Last week, we talked about don't get it twisted, right? We talked about having the right effort and the right attitude when we enter the race and really prioritize God um, in our lives. And even last uh, week one, we had Pastor Gerald on where we talked about realignment. And so I'm so excited to, to kick off week three. And if you, this is your first time listening, uh, Vantage Point is a weekly podcast and I do sermon series. So definitely continue to tune in. We're going to be switching it up here in a few weeks on our next series for season four. Uh, you can definitely go back and listen to, on all other platforms, whichever one you're listening on, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or even YouTube. Uh, you can definitely go back and listen to all of what Vantage Point has and definitely connect with us through email um, or even in the chats, whether it's on YouTube or anything like that. And so we're going to kick off week three. I have a special guest. I'm going to let her introduce herself right now. and We're going to jump right into this thing. Well, hello, world. I'm saying world because I am assuming and declaring that the world be, will be listening. <laughs> My name is Queen Fierce. I am mother of three, servant of God, uh, CEO of Melanin the brand. Um, and I, I just so happen to be a Detroit chapter president of Black Christian Influencers. And I'm excited about that. And so, yeah, that that's me in a nutshell. Awesome. Awesome. Well, definitely, Queen, welcome to Vantage Point. I know we were trying to get on earlier this year. We're trying to have you on as a guest, but definitely so mm-hmm. glad that you are back um, to be on this episode. And so we want to jump right into it, getting right to questions and conversations. So when we think about, when you think about prioritizing, getting back at it, right? Prioritizing our relationship with Christ. Something that I've said every week is that this time of year is such a transition year, my transition month, excuse me. And so whether it's kids going back to school, uh, parents getting back to work, other things happening, seasons are even changing, right? We're getting ready to come out of the heat of the summer, go into fall. So much transition is happening um, in the midst of August, but seems like that that right relationship with Christ always just seems to get put back or it gets shifted around and it loses its prioritization. So when you think about that, prioritizing your relationship with Christ, what does that mean to you? First, let me say that you're absolutely right with the transitioning of everything in life. Like it's almost like the dog is going back to school at this point. <laughs> everything is shifting, everything right, right. is changing, and all of these adjust adjustments and they're requiring us to be flexible. One thing I realized I can't be flexible with is my time spent with God. <laughs> That's good. I tried it. I tried it, Nick. I tried it, okay? <laughs> I tried to have a full day and then spend my time with God. I even tried to take care of all my financial obligations and then and then so into the kingdom i tried to <laughs> rest for a full day and then you know sit at the feet of jesus yeah, yeah. and what i found is that it really only works if you do that first yeah yeah come on like if you do it first and yeah. it's not just i hear people say all the time well god knows my heart he does know your heart and so that is why it is that much more imperative to stop what you're doing and start your day with Jesus for me um, in prioritizing God. I just realized um, not only do I need to read my word and, and study, um, but I need to talk to God more. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of us could benefit from it because what I mean is this, I recently um, lost my sister. She was my best friend, only two years older than me, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful to God for how he's kept me through that. I will say that first. But outside of that, I kind of recognized that after my sister passed, 
I talk to her more. Mm. And like something had been weird, like in my spirit, you know how you can just, you can just tell like I'm off. Like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm off. I'm not, I'm not in a bad mood. It isn't even a bad day, but Mm -hmm. I'm off. Like something is, and I, I, I literally had to, and this is something that we have to do. I had to take inventory of how my day started and I tracked back to yeah. when I wasn't feeling so funky. Mm-hmm. And the shift happened after having gained my sister. Yeah. I talked yeah. to her more and talked to God less. But what I found by doing that, I literally had to be careful and I had to apologize to God and I said, okay, God, this is not easy for me to say, but I believe just that quick, I made a God out of my sister. Yeah, yeah. You know, and a lot of us maybe can't even say that or have that have that thought, but let me introduce you to it. Um, it's possible yeah. to make a God out of our lost loved ones and it happens mm-hmm. so easily. Um, but long story short, I literally had to apologize to God and then put him back in his place in my life. Now, yeah. God knows he's God. Okay. One thing yeah. God knows is that he is God. Okay. Nobody beside him, nobody above him, nobody can stand against him. He already knows who he is. But by my prioritizing him, it is me telling myself and anyone else that is a witness yeah. who God is to me. Mm-hmm. He is the most important thing. He is my everything. He is all that I need. He is my peace and my strength and my joy. And he has become what my sister was for 33 years. Mm-hmm. He's become my best friend again. Yeah. And it it took for me to literally step back and say, wow, Lord, like I really, I don't have anybody to share all my business with. Mm -hmm. like who do I who do I talk to like who do I a new song came out who do I talk to about all the riffs and runs like yeah you know what I mean Mm -hmm. and God was like hey remember me (laughs) your real best friend (laughs) yeah yeah. talk to me I want to hear from you I want to hear from you and in that same um in that same regard I've learned and I'm continuously learning continuously learning to prioritize God in my finances what he does, what I've seen him do, and I love it. And I crack up every time because it's like, God, how? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. you just blow my mind. You blow my mind. He stretches what we give him. Come on. Come when on. I give God my time, I watch him stretch my day. It's really only 24 hours, but I watch him right, stretch right. it on the days that I give him my time. Wow. On when I give him my money first, when I, when I sow into people and when I sow into the house of God that I belong to and sow where he tells me and, and plant seed where he tells me, I watch God stretch my finances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, when I don't put them first, I watch him do the opposite. I'm mm-hmm. just going to be honest. Yeah, I watch yeah. him say, okay, baby girl, man, what's up? Because you can sow and serve all of these things, but none of these things can sow back into you. None of these things Mm. can harvest you. None of these things can pour back into you. So really, you know, what what do you really want your stuff to be like? What do you want your finances to be like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I prioritize that. That's how I'm learning. I say learning because it's something I have to put into practice every single day. You know, that that is so good because it's it's really three things in there. Like I want to dig unpack a little bit and so first um because people finances sewing back into you that's that's the first thing that that came to mind that that kind of stuck out to me and so i want to sit there with people for a minute because it's so so true how we prioritize our relationship with everybody around us children spouses Mm -hmm. friends Mm -hmm. moms anybody and we, I got to go talk to them. I got to go talk to them. Good, bad, or ugly. Oh, my God, this yeah. situation is going on. Let me go talk to them. But then we will talk to Jesus. And it's interesting because we've been on both sides, right? I've been on both sides. I've, I've run and talked to other people. But then I've run and talked to God. And 
I've found that usually when I leave from talking to people, I'm either more emotionally charged, I'm either confused, or I leave more frustrated than I was. But mm-hmm. when I go talk to God, I'm 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 I left it there. I have a peace. I have a calming. Yes. I have a under, peace that surpasses understanding, right? And I, because I've casted those cares to him and not other people. And that doesn't, yep. and you can even tell God the good things, right? You, you don't have to just tell him and something's wrong. And again, there's nothing wrong with talking to people. But what I found is if I have a, if I have an issue with somebody, do I go talk to them first? Or do mm. I go talk to God first? Yeah. Because nine times out of ten, really ten times out of ten, if I go talk to him first, when I talk to them, it might come out not it ten times out of ten is gonna come it's out a, a whole lot better it's a ten. than it would <laughs> if I talk to them first, right? And so yeah. why do you think like people put people before God? Because you don't you don't have to have faith to get to a, a person. You don't. It's just yeah, yeah. you know you can hear them audibly when they're talking back to you. And if they don't have anything to say, you also know that they don't have anything to say. With God, waiting is involved. And yeah, we yeah. do not wait well. We no, want an answer, right. we want a response quickly. Um and and we go to people because honestly. And I'm trying to, I'm working on this. <laughs> mm-hmm. We go to people because it's easier to get validation from people concerning yeah. whatever it is that we're talking about. It's easier oh, yeah. to get a person to agree with you as opposed to them checking you and correcting you. We know that if we go to God, especially if it's about us, yeah, yeah, 10 times out of 10, he's going to deal with us. Mm-hmm. You know? And that's not all. We want to be coddled first because it maybe if I'm coddled, it'll give me some type of buffer for the correction that I know is coming. Mm-hmm. It's just it's easier to talk to people, yeah. <laughs> but it, it's it, better to talk to God. It's yeah. more fruitful and refreshing to talk to God. Yeah. And I think, you know, I, people you might I think talking to other people is like, I got to get this off my chest. Right. I got to go. But you can do that with God. Like that's yeah. that's the thing I think a lot of people don't get. Like they somehow feel like I have to go to God in this certain type of way. I can't be emotional. I can't be, but you've gone to him bawling in tears before. So I don't understand why you can't be go to him when you're upset or when mm-hmm. you're when you're sad. Like these are the same things. He's the same God either way, right? And if you just shift the priority because the beauty of prioritizing the relationship is you actually start to build a relationship. Exactly. Right? Mm-hmm. And, and when you when you don't prioritize building a relationship with somebody, you just have moments with them that seemingly run out at some point because they're just moments. They're not constant. Yeah. They're not consistent. But creating this priority that says, you know what, God, in all things, and I love how you said people, finances, everything, I'm putting you first. I'm prioritizing you at, yeah. above all else, above the children, above everything. You are here, right? And and it's not to say that you're absent of everything else. It's that you are, I'm shifting my mindset to know, here's what I have to do, Right. Yep. Here's what I have to do. And we talked about it last week. We we kind of I use this analogy of a race and, and and the Olympics were just happening and those sprinters, right? They, I mean, they're just gone and, and running. But if you notice, they're using every ounce of them to reach a goal, to reach that thing. Yep. They're pressing, they're moving yep. forward. And so the question is, how are you? with God? How are people doing that same thing with God? Or is it like, you know what, God, I'll run that hundred yard dash at 10 o'clock at night when I've, you know, exhausted myself and then, oh, wait, you know what? (laughs) I'm I'm sorry. I'm tired. Now I'm going to go to sleep. 
We'll try, try again, this again tomorrow. In the morning. Right. Mm-hmm. We'll try again <laughs> tomorrow. Right. And so, and, and we're even like that. You mentioned finances and things like that. And so I want to touch on that a little bit because I, I think when I started the series, right, prioritizing relationship, in my mind, it meant so much more than just building a relationship, like any relationship. There's, it's many facets to what that means to prioritize, yeah. and finances is one, right? And I think any Christian um, would, if they're honest, 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 would mm-hmm. say that's probably the one topic um, that is the hardest to prioritize um, next to time. Um, it would be your finances, right? I only have so much time. I only have so much money. And and, and so I want to, you know, touch on that a little bit uh, when it comes to, you know, you talked, you you shared a little bit how you've seen him stretch, you've seen him move. Um, But when you really think about like for for the people listening, wherever they are, the practical prioritization when it comes to finances and your relationship with Christ. So now you put me to work and I accept that's fine. (laughs) That's fine. Um, How can I make it practical (laughs) without saying, without being bossy? Cause I really, honestly, I just want to say so into the kink is not, I don't, I can't make it. There are no like bite-sized morsels for this because anyone can anyone can argue it there are contrary points um i don't necessarily agree but i'll just say wherever you belong so into where you're being nourished and edified yeah because your finances and your life and everything that you touch and try to produce won't work well for you if you don't it's almost like you're stealing it's almost like god is giving you these downloads and these deposits of ideas that are million dollar ideas and they're created to set people free from financial bondage and you won't even take crumbs of what god is giving you to reestablish the kingdom i can't make it more practical than so so you can't lose Yeah. on my life and on Pastor Nick's life. You can't lose. And you can come back and check with me if you do. That's how much I know you won't. <laughs> I mean, for real, because it, it's, it's literally the one point in scripture that he says, test me and see if I don't do what I said I would do. And it's... And, and I'll I'll take it a step further in the practical. It's not easy, and I'm not saying that to make it think that. Oh my! I'll never. It's not an easy thing, but taking the first step in something often isn't easy. But it's an act of obedience. It's an act mm-hmm. of trust. That that's really mm-hmm. what I feel. When it comes to your finances and God, it's all, it's not about how much money you have. It's not about, you know, it, it's about obedience, but when it really boils down to it, if you really strip it down and, 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 and do that, it, it's all about trust. Do you trust yep. him with that? You trusted him with your life. Do you trust him with your wallet? Do you trust him with your bank account? Do you trust him with these things and here's the the just goofy thing about that um how do you build trust with somebody you have a relationship with them that's how you gain trust in somebody you want to trust jesus you have to have a relationship with him point blank bottom line yeah. period so i can't yeah. make you trust him and i can't make you have a relationship with him but what i know from my own personal experience and what queen is sharing is that it's a it boils down to trust and it boils down to relationship which goes all the way back to priority if you make him a little priority you'll have a little relationship which means you have little trust if yeah. you make him a bigger priority you'll grow even more in your relationship and you'll learn to trust him in all things and and, and it's so you said it too earlier about sowing back into you like the things we do don't sow back into us Right. 
it's yeah. sowing into Jesus. It's sowing into who he is in that relationship, growing and building, and that reciprocates something in us, right? And, and when we think about it, I mean, we are on here, and, I, and I'll and i say it, like, we are not on here thinking like, and that's for everybody that's listening, we are not um, there, quote unquote, right? We have not arrived at that. And that's what I loved about life. <laughs> right. we, we talked about that. Paul talked about that. He's even, we, by definition, we probably would say Paul, Paul in the Bible was like the dude, you know, after Damascus anyway, you know, he was like, right, the like dude. <laughs> if we had to equate yeah. somebody in the, in the echelon of Christian heroics, right? Paul would okay. be, right Paul would up, be there. up there. Yes, Top he would. three, right? <laughs> Paul would be the goat of the Bible, one of the goats, right? Next, he obviously, would. Jesus is the goat, right? But Paul would be at the top of a list, right? And even he said, I still press forward, yeah. even though I'm all these things. And then he even says it. We talked about it last week. Here's all the things I've done that I thought were important, and they mean nothing compared to Same. my relationship with him my relationship with Jesus and all those things, all the money you can make $8 million a year, $8 an hour. It doesn't matter if you don't have a relationship, who cares? Who cares? Who actually even cares? Who really (laughs) does care? That's what's priority. And I think that's the beauty of this. And, And even when we think about all the things that are going on in August, all the things that are happening, where does Jesus fit? Right. Where does he fit in your priority? And and not again, not just talking to him. That's part of it. Not just reading your word. That's part of it. In all things, in all things, are you trusting him in every step you take? And so you, you talked about it a little bit, but I'm curious, like when you hear that, like every step I take, what makes it not easy to take the next step, but what makes you confident in taking the next step oh see and we're just gonna keep going back to it what makes me confident in taking the next step is my trust is my trust in God and it came from our relationship it came from our time spent together I've seen him come through so many times Mm -hmm. he's Mm -hmm. created a track record for me he's created a cycle a pattern and I already know what's going to happen Every time he's going to come through, he's going to come through. And for me to know that and not place him at the forefront of everything. I mean, I don't want to. It's just ridiculous to me for me having gone through what I personally have been through. And to know how it how it feels and what it looks like for God to bring me out on the other side for real. Not fake happy, not fake peace, not fake strong. How could I not make him the most important thing? How could I not like make him my first thought and my last thought? I don't know that I could imagine life without. Even though I've lived life without. I can't Mm -hmm. even (laughs) remember. I I can't remember. That's what I was about to say. I can't even remember. I cannot remember life without when it was me without him. But I can't imagine life without him. Like that's, and and I'm not, you know, I'm 38. I haven't been a Christian for very long. I'm not a perfect Christian by any stretch. There are no perfect Christians. If somebody's telling you that, run. Um, But there are none. Um, (laughs) But it's just a life without. It's a life without. (laughs) A life without Jesus is a life life without fill in the blank. I mean, you just are missing out. And if you, and I'm just encouraging somebody, like if you keep deprioritizing, like I'll get to it, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. Time is, is of the essence when it comes to that time is of, I mean, I, I think the last two years alone, have shown us time is so precious. Time is such like, 
there's no time like the present. Like it, it, it literally means so much more now. Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't mean that much to you, I don't know where you've been, but mm-hmm. it, it's, it, it is such an essence when it comes to time and how f- finite it is and how much we think we have. Mm-hmm. And it's such a weight to feel the the world without him. Yeah. You know, and I, I remember I did the statistics a while. I looked at them. I think globally there's probably, I think 2.3, 2.5 million Christians and there's 7.5 billion people in the world. So there's mm-hmm. 5 billion <laughs> people or 2.3 billion. I can't remember. But two thirds of the world live without. Like, and what? then, and then wait, the ones who have or have accepted Christ as their savior, that doesn't even mean that they prioritize him. So, I mean, come on, like for real, because go got access, further. but you don't use it. I, I mean, I another series we did called Core Strength. We talked about the Bible being a core of what we do. And 40% or 50%, I can't remember the exact number, of Christians only read their Bible once a week. And, wow, you know, the whole series was based on the the analogy of working your core, working out, going to the gym. Mm -hmm. You have people that, what happens when you go to the gym every day? You reap the benefits of that gym every day. But if you Mm -hmm. only go once a week, once a month, once a year. You're going to be weak. Those CEO muscles are Christians, going to be weak. Right? Christmas, Easter, and and I, what, what's the O? I, I don't think I remember what the O is. CEO. Christ, Christmas, Easter, and what I don't is know. the O? I don't know what the O is. It should be okay, CEM we'll it because it should be Mother's Day, but <laughs> that's usually the only other day. We can just make up one. We'll make up yeah. one. CEM. There you go. But it, and, and it's not us saying, oh, you need to do the. the I'm only saying. You only get out what you put in. And if you don't put in the time, you'll get nothing from it. And that's the beauty of prioritizing. That's the beauty of of, of shifting that mindset um, to to really key in and hone in on who he is and what he's about. And so even as we, you know, come kind of lasting thoughts, um, the floor is yours. Like, what do you want to tell? the people, Vantage Point listeners, to help them prioritize their relationship with Christ? Okay, this might be a little tough, but I need y'all to hear me. And I'm saying this because I love you. Nick said earlier, he mentioned uh, prioritizing God over your children. (laughs) Now, while that may be a tough pill to swallow, prioritizing God and your time spent with him and your entire relationship with him over your children, over your spouse, (laughs) capital S's, is what will fuel you to care for that relationship properly. I promise you, you cannot love anyone properly without loving God in the proper place first. For the people, please. You cannot love anyone adequately fulfilling enough I mean to the means that they blossom because of the love that they're receiving from you you can't do any of that without prioritizing and keeping God first like he needs to do some work in you before you can love someone he needs to provide wisdom and strategy before you can put your you know put utensils in your hands and and get to work. He needs to be there first. Trust me, you want God to go before you in your day. Trust me, you want God to go before you in your business strategies. Trust me, you want God to come into the meeting room before, you know, it's time for you to go in and before it's time for you and your spouse to have certain conversations. Every conversation, you want God before you and he can't be before you if you don't put him there he's a gentleman he will not bombard his way to the top you have to constantly make it known that listen 
I say this. I'm personal with God. I'd be like, God, you my baby. You know, I love you. It's all about you. It's all about you. This day is all about you. This podcast is all about you. This is all about you. It's you're the reason why we're here. You're the reason why we're doing it. If we can't put you at the top, then really we shouldn't even be doing any of this anymore. I love you guys. I had to say I love you at the end because... (laughs) Yeah, it's like the sandwich effect, you know, something good. Yes, you love you, exactly. You, that, and then I'm get, you were you know, in class with me. When oh you yeah, about I mean, you, you know, I, I leadership one on one. Let me let me give yeah. you this sandwich. <laughs> let me give you this sandwich. But I, I mean, it's so. You you said something that, I, I like. How do you, how are you able to fulfill the d- demand of a relationship, children, spouse, friends, family, yourself? without putting Christ first. Like you have to do it. Like it, it you will yeah, you will wonder why you're running on empty trying to fulfill mm-hmm. a relationship because you yourself are not full and girded up and and yep. show, how how can you have grace with your children if you I don't go, go to there. the one <laughs> who gives you grace to have grace for your children? How can you have uh, how can you show love How can you show the love of Christ to a world who is so confused and and divided over mass or vaccines Mm -hmm. or race or anything without going to the one who first dealt with some of the worst division ever imaginable on, on this, in this world. And People, I need to fight this in my own emotions. I need to fight this yeah. in my own flesh. And it's like, no, that that's not, it's not going to work. Let me just say it clearly. It's it not work. going to work. It might work for a moment. It might work for a little bit, right? Your car will run with a half tank of gas until it don't have a half tank of gas. Yeah. And then you need to go get more gas. Now, do you get the gas yourself or do you go to the source that has the gas? Mm -hmm. I'll leave it there. You don't have to answer it if you're listening, but I figure you get what I'm saying. It's the same way. You have to go back to the source. You have to prioritize the source. You have to do that because the benefits of it, like literally the benefits of prioritization are so key and so important. And so Queen, thank you so much because this has it's been, been great. A pleasure. It has been an <laughs> honor. Um, two things. One, I want you to let people know how they can connect with you. And then two, I would like you to pray for people. Um, and you can do that in whichever order you like. Okay, so um, I'll start with where you guys can find me. Um, I'm Queen Fierce on all social media platforms. That includes YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, uh, and that's Queen Fierce, Q U E E N F I E R C E. Um, yeah, y'all check me out. I would love to hear from you guys and love to hear some feedback. And if you don't have nothing else, we can pray. Okay. Lord, we love you. Um, we do not discount this opportunity as. Uh, edification and and nourishment for our relationship with you. I am so grateful (laughs) for being reminded of how to put you first, God, because yes, we say you are the most important thing. And yes, we say that you are absolute everything, but how about if we just start fresh and show you that? How about if we don't even say it, but we just Make sure that every single time you think of us that you smile. And we'll go so far as to say that if you need anyone, Father, that we're here, if you need hands and feet in the world, in the land, on planet Earth, then we are here and we're making ourselves available to you as we continue to make you the most important thing of our lives. Father, I ask that everything else fall in place. Your word teaches us that if you seek your kingdom first, 
and all of these things will be added. And it says all of these things will be added because nothing is excluded. That means the children will be at peace because we put you first. That means the marriage will work out. The communication will be smooth because we put you first. That means that uh, the school supplies, resources will come forth because we put you first. You got it all under control and you got the world in your hands. And we know this because we've seen you work. We know this because we've never seen you fail and we know that you can't. So Father, I lift you up and I lift up every brother and sister of mine listening right now under the sound of my voice. I declare that whatever they have to do, whatever adjustments that need to be made, whatever corner they need to find, whatever to-do list they need to write out, they will put you at the very top and you will show out for them. And they'll be reminded that it was you all along and that you'll get the glory. I'll forever praise you and lift you up. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. And so thank you again so much, Queen, for being on the show. Um, Thank you for all those that are listening wherever you are in the world. Like, that's still crazy to me that this is a global show. But wherever you are, (laughs) make sure to like, subscribe, follow us. Um, And remember, keep seeking insight, keys, and perspective to everyday living through the lens of God. It'll change your life. We'll see you next week on Vantage Point.